So imagine meeting a guy at the gas station. You invite him back to the house to engage in some adult activities. He accepts the offer, comes to the house, participates in adult activities with you and multiple other people in the home. And then he decides to come back to attempt to end your life so no one finds out about it. Well, allow me to introduce you to Devon Robinson. So on May 25th of 2019, a group of black young LGBTQ members took a trip to the gas station corner store in their local neighborhood in Detroit, Michigan. So upon them arriving to a store, they saw a local boy that they knew from school in the neighborhood who would later on be identified as Devon Robinson inside of the store. I am going to post the link in the description box so you guys can watch the full trial. You guys will also be able to see the surveillance video from the gas station on the night of the event where he met the group of LGBTQ members inside of the gas station. Oh yes, he left the paper trail, baby. So upon making eye contact with Devon Robinson in the store, the group of LGBTQ members had already identified him as what we know to be trade. And for y'all who don't know what trade is, trade in the LGBTQ community typically means a masculine black man who may engage in gay sexual activities but doesn't classify as gay. He isn't known as gay. He isn't looked at as gay. He's viewed as a heterosexual man. Trade is also known as a heterosexual man who would exchange sexual favors for money, for gifts, for whatever. That's the definition of trade. So from the time the group of friends arrived in the gas station, they're kind of making eye contact with Devon Robinson, flirting with him, attempting to get his attention. As most download men do, he's kind of just brushing it off. You know, he's in front of the cashier. He can't really do too much. So boom. He walks outside of the store. The group of friends are outside of the store, I guess, waiting on him. So the transgender woman, Paris Cameron, had the conversation with Devon Robinson. Now, we don't know exactly what they talked about, but based off the conversation that we saw, she invited him back to the house with her and her friends. After that, we see her and her friends leave in their vehicle. Devon Robinson starts walking down that way. So we're going to fast forward. Devon Robinson pulls up to the house that her and her that the transgender woman Paris Cameron and her friends are at. Now I forgot to mention that when they entered the store, Devon Robinson was making jokes with the cashier, you know, just telling him, hey, it's just a group of gay guys. It's just gay people, you know, nothing serious. So he knew who they were. And then later on you'll figure out if you watch the actual trial that he went to school with a couple of the guys. So based off the testimony of one of the surviving witnesses when Devon Robinson arrived to the house, he engaged in oral sex with multiple people in the house. So even though he was invited to the house by the transgender woman, Paris Cameron, when he got to the house, he engaged in sex with multiple people. Not only Paris Cameron, which was the transgender woman, he engaged in oral sex with about four or five different gay men as well. Please remember that because that's going to go back to something that I said in my previous loyalty video. Download men have no loyalty. But yeah, he engages in the sexual activity with four or five different people in the house. After the sexual activity, he goes downstairs. He's about to leave. All the LGBTQ friends are sitting in the living room. Based off what they're saying, they're making jokes about how, you know, girl, we just got this tree. Girl, we got him to do whatever he wanted. He came in here and had a blast with us. And Devon Robinson is hearing all this as he's leaving. So the surviving witness said that when Devon Robinson was leaving, he mentioned, y'all will see me again. But they never thought too much about it. They just thought, you know, he'll be back for another party, girl. He's going to come back and get his life. So Devon Robinson leaves the house. He lives right down the street. This is his neighborhood. This is where he grew up and this is where he went to school at. So he leaves. He comes back 15 minutes later and opens fire on the whole house, attempting to end the lives of everyone in that house who was a witness to him basically attending a gay sex party. As a result of this, Timothy Blanchard, Alante Davis, and Paris Cameron lost their lives that night to Devon Robinson. Um, he also attempted to end the lives of two other people that were in the house, but they both managed to survive. So now I've given you the story. Now let's get into a few things. 
First of all, as LGBTQ members, we have got to use our common sense when dealing with these men, especially down low men. This was extremely irresponsible. This was not safe. There has got to be some level of discretion that we have when messing with down low men. Because you have to understand, down low men do not feel any type of attachment or connection to the LGBTQ community outside of sex. So these are not men who agree with us. These are not men who identify with us. These are not men that are looking to be friends or allies with us. Because these guys essentially invited a random neighborhood dude into the house where they lived to engage in sexual activities. And this man came back. And attempted to end all of their lives. It's never that serious for no trade. So we broke the story down in the most basic terms so everyone watching could understand. Now, let's really get into it. These girls met a down low man at the gas station. They thought he was attractive. They invited him back to the house for a sex party. The down low man went for it. In the video from the gas station, you can see him pacing back and forth like, eh, I don't know if I really want to do this. I don't know if I'm really ready to come out yet. And every time, I personally believe every time a down low man has gay sex or before they're engaging gay sex, there's always that, eh, the risk. It's the risk. It's the risk. Will somebody find out? Can I be discreet? What will I do if someone finds out? But that urge that they have for that sex always outpowers the risk and the fear. At least until they climax. Boom. So you have a down low man. He pulls up to the house. Probably in his mind he's saying, you know, I'm only going to go there and engage in sexual activity with the transgender women. A lot of times, in my opinion, I believe that these down low men start off with transgender women because it makes them feel less gay. But as you can see in this story, a lot of times they have an interest in men. Ultimately, they want men. So when he got to the house, based off the witness testimonial... He went crazy, had sex with over five different people in the house. So he attended a gay sex party. I'm assuming this is his first gay sex party. Um, Based off the way he went in there and got, I don't know. I feel like he might have did this before. But what he said to the detectives was this was his first time. He also lied to the detectives and said he only had sex with the transgender women. Which is something that down low men do a lot. Again, they believe if they mess with transgender women, it makes them less gay or they can still be perceived as heterosexual. But just like I told y'all, baby, that gay sex is too good. Once you start, you can't stop. I'm going to guarantee you that. So he just couldn't mess with Paris. He's already in the sex house where they all having sex. It's a sex party. So, you know, I'm going to go into the other room and see what's going on. So he went into the male's room. He had sex with this male. He had sex with two men in this room. At one point, they said four different men were performing oral sex on him at once. This down low man lost his mind in that gay sex party. And one of the surviving witnesses mentioned that Devon Robinson asked him to perform oral sex on him also. But he let Devon Robinson know, you know, I'm not a bottom. So if you're not going to perform it on me, I'm not going to perform it on you. And I absolutely respect that young man. If that's how you play so anyways, he has sex with everybody in the house. He gets his rocks off as the down low men do. And then he comes to his senses. So he's ready to get up out of there. So as he gets up out of there and he's walking home, he's now realizing, okay, damn, I've had sex with not only a transgender woman, but I've had sex with four or five different men on top of that. They were all in there. They all know my face. We, Some of us went to school together. We live in the same neighborhood. I'm going to have to see them again. And I don't trust that they're going to keep my secret. And what you need to understand when you deal with down low men, a lot of times they make you feel like you're back in the closet because you're always keeping secrets for them. Always about their secrecy and their privacy and their protection. They don't really care about you. And keep in mind the discretion, again, is only for the heterosexual community because obviously he came to a gay sex party full of LGBTQ members, so he did not care about them knowing that he was gay. He only cares about the heterosexual world not finding out. But I've already told y'all that. Watch the previous videos. So, 10, 15 minutes later, he comes back to the house, opens fire on everybody in the house. Everybody starts scattering. Everybody starts running. Um, one of the guys ran down to the basement who happened to survive. But this guy sent three LGBTQ members to meet their maker. So, imagine me having sex with you. 
And because you're afraid and you're a coward and you can't stand up as a man and say, this is what I like and this is what I'm attracted to. You think that I deserve to not be here on this world because I may tell somebody my truth? Yeah, this is absolutely unacceptable. And this is dangerous and we have to protect ourselves. Now, I'm not here to say all down women are dangerous based off my experiences with them. I've never had any dangerous experiences. I've never felt unsafe around the few that I've encountered. But that does not negate the fact that things like this do happen. First of all, my heart goes out to everyone who lost their lives, anyone who lost a family member, a friend, a spouse. Whatever these people meant to you guys, my heart goes out to you. And rest in peace to those beautiful young LGBTQ souls. They were just getting started. But I think the bigger question is why was this 19-year-old black male so afraid of people finding out that he attended a gay sex party and had gay sex as a grown man to the point that he was willing to end the lives of everyone in that house? This is a problem in the black community, homophobia. These men are so afraid to be themselves. But if you notice, they're not afraid to have that gay sex. Now, I already told y'all that gay sex. It's going to get you every time. But it seems today everyone wants to have the gay sex without having to be labeled as gay. Or go through the battles and scrutiny that LGBTQ members go through. This young man had his whole life to live. He threw his whole life away based off one night of sex and passion that he was afraid would get out to everybody. So my question to download men is, who the hell are y'all afraid of? The boogeyman? Like, what is someone really going to do to you if they find out that you're gay? Or you're bisexual? Or you like transgender women? Or you don't even have to classify yourself? Just say you like what you like and that's it. You do not owe anyone an explanation. This story just kind of hurt. Hurt my feelings a little bit because it's a little unsettling to know that so many men are living a life of misery where they feel like they have to lie and hide and cover up for something that they did not choose. You're not a monster. You're not a criminal. You are not less than because you have an attraction to the same sex. And if more of these men truly felt this way and believed that they could exist in this world and be loved and respected and cherished just as any other person could with being gay, maybe these men would be more open. Maybe these men would be more happy. Maybe we would not have such a large population of black download men. Like, why is it 2022 and black men are still struggling with their sexuality in the United States of America? This is one of the most freest countries you will ever live in. You can actually be yourself. You can live the life you want. You can love who you want to and not be criticized. Well, you will be criticized for it, but you won't be criminalized for it. And you won't be made to feel like you're less of a person. I understand in a black community, yes, certain black people are extremely religious. Certain black people are intolerant. Certain black people don't have a lot of patience. The black people are not open to anything different from what they've known. But that's when you have to remove yourself from them. Divest from homophobes, divest from hate, hateful, mean spirited, simple minded, intolerant people. Some people will remain ignorant to things that they don't know. Some people are unwilling to do research and learn something different from what they've been taught. Because a lot of the homophobia and hatred towards gay people in the black gay community has to be unlearned. And unless they're willing to unlearn everything that they've been taught, you are not going to be able to get everybody to see your life the way you see it. Listen, I'm an openly gay man. I've been through it with family. I've been through it with people I grew up with. Everyone will not accept it. But what you going to do? Because your feelings ain't going to change. You're still going to be attracted to men. If you're a woman, you're still going to be attracted to women. It's not going to change. So you owe it to yourself to live in your truth because it's only going to get worse. This boy was 19, living a download lifestyle at 19. He'd already decided that he wasn't going to allow himself the chance to live a normal, happy, productive life, giving himself a chance to find genuine love and be happy. Now he's going to be in jail for the rest of his life. It's just so unfortunate. And then you listen to the jail call with him and his mom, who should have been charged with harboring a fugitive, if you ask me. 
And I'm listening to her talk and I'm like, wow, well, if that's who I grew up around or that's who I was raised by, I understand why he's on the down low. She did not sound like the type of mother you could come and talk to about anything. She did not sound like the type of mother I could come to and say, hey, mom, I'm struggling with my sexuality. I think I may be attracted to men. And what's so ironic about that is she was a lesbian woman. But that just goes to show you that internalized homophobia exists, too, because although she was a lesbian and she was with a woman, she was not open to her son living in his truth. Even the things she said, yeah, because I was telling everybody, I know my boy ain't gay and da 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 It's like, ma'am, you are a lesbian woman with a gay son. And then when he finally did come out to his mom on the jail call, she sounded disappointed. She did not sound like she was happy with it. She tried to give him the, well, you know, you could have always came to me. But you can tell it was not genuine. She did not seem like a nurturing woman. She did not seem like a woman who showed a lot of love and affection to her son. I just did not get it from her. But I could be wrong. But yeah, I can go on and on. Devon Robinson was charged and found guilty. He will be facing, I believe, three life sentences. He was charged with 10 counts. I'll put the charges in the description box, child. I can't name them all. But this story um, just goes to show that some download men can be dangerous. Most download men that you meet are cowards. Um, you need to protect yourself and be safe at all times. Use your discretion. Um, I would not pick up random men. I would not invite random men back to my house. I understand you feel like I'm grown. I'm mature. I can defend myself. I can protect myself. These men are harmless. But that is not always the case. And to Devon Robinson, um. I mean, I'm sorry. I think you're a monster. You know, my heart goes out to you. I wish that you would have had the chance to actually live in your truth and live a happy, productive life as an LGBTQ man. I understand the struggles with trying to come out. I went through it. We all go through it. But it does get better. And you have to understand and believe in your mind and your heart that you are worthy of living the same life that everybody else can live. You're not less than anyone. And you deserve to genuinely be happy. And once you realize those things, there won't be anyone or anything that will force you to not live in your truth. But that's a realization that every LGBTQ member has to come to on their own. So, yeah, guys, I will put the link in the description box. You guys can check out the trials. You can see the video from the gas station. Let me know what you thought about the Devon Robinson trial. How do you feel about it? What was your opinion? Do you know any similar situations? Have you been in any situations with a download man that could have ended dangerous? Let me know. And if you like this type of content, please like, comment, share, subscribe so I can know what type of videos to post. See you next time.